Good afternoon and welcome to the Road to Recovery, the Road to Freedom with Mark. This is my uh, 28 minute show every Friday. Except for over Christmas of course. And I've been away, it's good to be back. It's nice to uh, be in touch with you all again, my friends in the wire wrapper. And up in the beautiful Hawke's Bay, my heart goes out to those people who got the orchardists who got hit by the hail. By the way, pay your staff more money please. Um... Anyway, yeah, it was it was real sad to see your loss. Um, you know, unseasonal hailstorms they do happen, and it can be devastating when you've put your heart and soul into um, you know making a really nice export quality crop, only to see it destroyed in front of you. It, it's heartbreaking, and and you know, it it's very stressful and it can make you very mentally unwell of course it's going to you know the financial pressure insurance never really covers everything and you see my show the road to recovery is about mental health and this is one of the issues that we need to understand is that um horticulture and agriculture always come with enormous pressures when it comes to certain times of the year you know carving for the cockies and and cropping for the orchardists and these are times of you know shearing for 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 the sheep these are times of extraordinary stress and pressure you're battling against the elements often and you know nature is not always kind and when you are living at the largesse of nature often you can get a kick in the slats you weren't expecting and it, it can be really devastating not just for that individual but often there's pressures because a lot of other people are relying on that person for their incomes and you know to feed their families and so it can be doubly devastating for those people who are taking on the financial burden and responsibility of providing food and work for others so you know my heart goes out to these folks and i think you know these are times when we all need to rally around as a community because no one else is really going to help and you've got to realize that um the contributions made by businesses like that are absolutely essential. Never has that been more prevalent than now with this COVID. Funny old things have happened. You know, tourism has really, really suffered, but food producers are doing extraordinarily well. And this is why I have... I'm not anti-tourism, OK, but I say that tourism comes with costs and it makes you vulnerable. And you see nations that are totally reliant, basically beggars living off foreigners rather than people who are independent and secure, especially in terms of food security. The magnificent thing about living in Aotearoa is that we have a place where there is plenty for all. Unfortunately, the food banks this year have handed out more food than ever before. So although I see all these crops in the fields and the orchards and stuff, there is a disparity between those who have money and those who don't. And there is a level of poverty in New Zealand now that, Quite frankly, I, I've never really seen before. I've never seen as many people in need. And it's not as if we don't have enough as a nation. It's simply that the individuals on the bottom of the pile are not getting their fair share. That's what it comes down to. There's a lot of extremely well-off people in this country who are paying no tax. I mean, even people like Peter Garrett have come forward and said, look, the rich should pay more tax. Um, yeah, and for a man like that, he's an incredibly wealthy man, but he's a philanthropist too. I mean, he helps a lot of people in this world, and he's an incredibly intelligent and capable man. Unfortunately, he's not everybody's cup of tea. You've got people offside. He was a chap that said cats have no place in, in, in New Zealand, or I should say more specifically in Aotearoa. 
Um, and it's important that I use that word because we need to get our headspace around the fact that we are islands in the bottom of the Pacific. So the country lends itself ostensibly towards birds and birds number one enemy is the super predator the cat so mr garrett is absolutely 100 percent correct when he says that cats have no place in this country cats stoats ferrets weasels possums rats hedgehogs have no place in this country introduced animals that have devastated the bush now i love this country i use this country to heal my mental illnesses and it's been a long road for me because I've had no one to show me the way. I've had to learn it bit by bit. But I'm trying to help you in this regard. Now, you know, I've been to places in this country where the silence has been devastating. Not a peep, not a word, not a single thing. Now, when Cook and Banks came here they had to go out to the beach to talk because the bird song was so loud they had to shout at each other to be heard i've never experienced that anywhere not on stewart island not deep down the west coast nowhere does that happen anymore so you know a lot of the native life has been hit really really hard and it's good to see that fewer people have pets um, and that's not by choice, that's, again, through poverty. People simply can't afford to feed animals anymore. It used to be that mince was cheap, now it's $17 a kilo. So that's, that's why the poor are suffering. I look at how prices have gone up over the years, and I often um, get old catalogues or old newspapers and prices, and I work out the percentage of how things have risen in price over the years. What, five cents bought then and how much is that in equivalent dollars today and it's interesting to see that certain things don't really go up in price they generally tend to be things like drugs alcohol all the things that are basically bad for you don't go up a hell of a lot in price cigarettes is an exception because the government has slapped greater and greater taxes on them to try and force you into compliance which is their little tricky trick forcing you into compliance now to me the whip is never the solution the whip makes the donkey angry and stubborn okay far better the carrot education encouragement alternatives help this is what's required not a beating it's never a solution Oh, it solves the problem short term, but other problems spring their ugly heads up as a result. And we've seen that in society in all different kinds of ways over the years. Now, as far as mental health goes, it's very important, like I say, that we support people in their times of trouble. You know, to look at something on the TV and go, oh, that's sad, and then, you know, have another bag of chips. Well... Maybe get on Give a Little or something. Maybe maybe go to the town, right, and spend some money there in their shops. This is what I'm trying to do all the time now, is as much as possible support my local businesses, takeaways, whatever, small businesses over this period of time, because a lot of businesses have been hit hard. And I say that now is not a time for caution and penny pinching. Loads of people are spending money on fancy pants stuff right what i ask of you is that you have consideration for small businesses now more than ever because they need our support to keep going small businesses are the largest employer in new zealand okay for every one person who is successful they hire another that's a 100 percent increase in staff you are never going to get that in a big business so small businesses need to be supported and the other thing i want to talk about today is is the very issue of mental health okay so i guess everybody by now anyone and everyone who hears me who spends any time with me realizes that i have a unique and unusual perspective on pretty much everything all aspects of life and one of them is this there is a lot of 
mental health issues, a lot of depression at the moment, and not just because of unseasonal hail. COVID-19 has made people afraid, afraid of their futures. It's made them depressed. They've been locked down. They can't get overseas. They can't see families. all kinds of problems that this has caused. And this is going to be ongoing for years. This is going to have a knock-on effect well beyond a decade, believe you me. And should these vaccines not work? Well, crikey. But here we are in this beautiful country, and what we need to do is just sit back, relax, take a deep breath, spread your shoulders, enjoy the sunshine, and realise that we are in a splendid, splendid position. We have a lot to be happy about. You know, don't tell me that the pint's half empty right now. I'm telling you it's half full, and more. Look, we're in a fantastic position right now. Our country hasn't been hit anywhere near as hard as anybody else. We've isolated, we've done the right things, and we live a long, long, long way from anywhere else. And that's really what saved us more than anything else. So, you know, we're in a very good position, and yet there's an awful lot of depression around. And I feel sorry for the school kids who had exams coming up and haven't been able to study this year. As far as I'm concerned, the country should just give them a pass. They've been through enough. Just let them go through. Give them, give them, give them a B all the way across the board. Those who who looked outstanding at the beginning of the year, give them an A, and let these kids through and take the pressure off. Because you know, they need a fair chance like everybody else. Now, when it comes to depression, I understand auctioners getting smacked like that, kids having their education stuffed up like that, people losing their jobs. People who worked for um, Air New Zealand, you know, oh, you poor souls. I know you're going to have to completely change careers. Don't put your life on hold, right? Get up, get going, get a new career. It's, many of your skills will transition across to other, other work. What we need to do now, instead of looking down and saying everything is doom and gloom, we need to look up and look out and look wide and far for opportunities. Yes, there is a lot of depression and yes, there is a lot of poverty. Why? Because we live in a magnificent country? No. So you see, it's it's not what you do, it's the way that you do it. And what I mean by this is... There's a lot of depression in this country, not because of the country itself. I've travelled a lot of the world, and very rarely have I seen places as beautiful as this. And there are places that I've been and things that I've seen in this country that still, to me, just seem like a dream, that like they were never real. So incredible so amazing i spend a lot of time out on the sea and the things that you see whales you know uh, dolphins sunfish moonfish seals all kinds of amazing things you see out there big old sharks and you realize just how incredible and special this place is this country is beautiful and if you allow it to be it is healing so why is there the poverty why is the depression it simply comes down to society it is what we are doing to each other that is causing this problem therefore it is what we do to each other that solves the problem right we need Fairness. We pride ourselves on this. It's the Kiwi way to do the right thing. What's fair, what's right, regardless of, of race or creed or religion or whatever. We're all equal under the sun as far as we're concerned. But we're not helping each other. There are too many divisions and never was there a greater division than what's going on right now. We are creating a class system like never before. It is being focused, it is being defined between two distinct groups of people that are being driven further and further and further apart. And the wedge that is driving us apart is financial. There are now the haves and the have-nots. There are people who own their own houses and there are people who rent. Now, the people who rent, the chances of them ever owning a house have diminished dramatically. And we need a new system to allow those people to financially empower themselves. Otherwise, they're going to be paying some other bugger's mortgage for the rest of their lives. 
And I emphasise the fact that they are paying somebody else's mortgage. So if they're doing that, we have to find a way to make that mortgage their mortgage if that's what they want. It is a massive commitment, I understand. But your own house, your own property gives you security. It gives you spiritual mental security you can you can put a nail in the wall and and hang a picture up you can buy a nice carpet you can plant a tree it's your place it's your soul you put your soul into it it's home it's not just some shitter that you're renting for now and you kick a hole in the wall and throw your rubbish out the back and you don't care this is the difference i'm finding more and more renters that are just sad and people buy a house they want to paint it they want to make it look beautiful this is all about making yourself feel good about your space and this is how good mental health works having a secure home a place to put down roots an anchor that holds your soul, your spirit, your mind, your heart, your body in a place that you make better for yourself and those you love. So this is the difference between a renter and a home and we need to get more poorer people into homes, into safe, comfortable positions instead of being so vulnerable that they can't even feed themselves. This Alarm bells should be ringing people. This is terribly wrong. When people are queuing up for free bread that's passed its best before day, alarm bells should be ringing. Okay? This is wrong. This is apples growing on trees and people can't afford them. And this needs to change. This needs to change at every level, right? At, at, at the highest governmental level, but local government do absolutely nothing to help their towns, they just let them grind into nothing. All they are concerned with, just like the police, is compliance. It's all they care about. Are you complying with the rules? They have no vision. They're not building, making, beautifying their towns. They're not doing anything for the people who pay their wages. That's the thing that really rips my shorts. Their children are fed by people who give them money for their jobs and they let their towns grind down into ghost towns. Shame on you. There is also the level of society, people helping people. I would love to see a time now where we look in towards ourselves and around us and say, how can I improve my lot how can i make my society better i want to see community gardens spring up everywhere to ensure food security for the poorest for communities to engage i want to see those little old ladies in their little gardening groups actually reach out to the poor and say hey we've got skills and ability we've got tools we can use we've got skills we can show you how to do this stuff there are people doing it but there is so little assistance it takes drive and determination and money from amazing individuals who are doing these things but these stories are untold their songs are unsung and this is where at a local governmental level we need to encourage our communities to assist each other especially in times of trouble because at the end of the day all we have is each other okay i've got about 10 minutes to rock I normally read a story, but there's no way I'm going to get through one in time, so I'd just like to have a little bit of a rabbit on if you don't mind. There's a number of other issues that we need to understand, and one of them is this. Our future is going to be troubled, even if COVID does fade away. There are other problems on the horizon. You may think we are over the madness, the insanity of Donald Trump, of, of white supremacists storming the capital to the point where they needed 25,000 troops to secure a peaceful transition of power in the United States. And everybody breathed a sigh of relief 
when Joe Biden and Camilla Harris stepped up and said, let's cure this country. And I applaud them wholeheartedly for what they say. But beware, my friends. Camilla Harris is one of the hardest people there is. She is a prosecutor from California renowned for being pretty damned uncompromising. She may have this nice exterior, but she is harder than nails on the inside. And as far as um, Joe Biden's Democrats go, their line on China is even harder than the Trump administration's was. They are getting tough, tough, tough. The Taiwanese are demanding that they be left alone. America supports them for independence. They've built up on the South Korean Peninsula five bases they have built and they are ready to rock. The South China Sea has been filled with aircraft carriers. America has made a ring of weaponry around China and they are going at each other like bulls. Biden reckons he knows you. He reckons he's got the measure of them. Well, these are troubled times in front of us. Very, very dangerous and troubled times and we are in the thick of it because we supported America in Vietnam when England did not. We now were the first to have a free trade agreement with China so we have one foot in each camp and we have no place and no right to tell China what to do not about the wages we can't dictate to America it is not our place, it is not our job and we will only ever be seen as an annoyance and a problem now that's not to say we stay silent where terrible things are happening to people we need to be heard but we need to do it in a diplomatic way not throw rocks, that is not a solution here's the real solution right what we've got to realise is our place in the world. We are only a tiny, tiny, tiny country. Little. We're little. We're like a little old mouse, right? And China, China's like a big old lion. So what does a mouse do to curry favour with the lion? You remember the old adage. The mouse takes the thorn from a lion's paw. And the lion looks at the mouse and says, You do have a use after all, my friend. So you see that, that's how we do it. We make ourselves useful. We make ourselves useful friends who are of assistance. We look for win-win situations where we can be a positive influence rather than a little whining voice in the corner. So we move forward with positivity, not just towards China, but towards America too. They can both be our friends. We're not so staunchly adversarial that we would choose to take up arms against one or other. We can and we must be friends with both and realise that we can be a good influence. You know, we profess to be an egalitarian society where we're, we're equal under the sun, but we're not. There's a lot of racism in this country and there's a lot of poverty in this country. Far, far, far more than there should be. And that hurts a lot of people physically and it hurts a hell of a lot of people mentally. And it is our society. It is our society that is the problem. The way in which we are doing things now. That's the problem we have to solve and nothing else. We live in this magnificent country and I would encourage you to go out. Get away from, from towns, from people, from society, from your worries and go for a walk on the beach around sunset. Take your shoes off, roll your trouser legs up and go for a little wander down the beach. Listen to nature, clear all of your problems out of your heart and your head and just be at peace with nature for a bit. That's what I want to encourage you to do. And if you can't get down the beach, some of us can't, go down the river and do that. Try and get out for a walk. Over the last two years, I've got to the point now where I walk every day, every single day, rain or shine. In fact, I've, I've started to love walking in the rain, and I find it extremely therapeutic to 
remove myself from the chatter and the babbling voices and the shitty TV and the stupid radio and just not not all radio is stupid this radio is great but some of it's just you know the main radio stations they seem to be all about chitter chatter and, and bullshit and nonsense good radio stations like the community radio stations they're the good oil and I'd ask you, please, encourage people, if they're going to listen to the radio, listen to a good radio station like Arrow that actually has something to say and contributes to your life rather than just some gap full of nonsense of Bon Jovi or Guns N' Roses, some garbage like that, you know? So many people on the station have such amazing stories to tell it's interesting it's it's it, it, it's mind expanding it's a wonderful thing these community radio stations and i'd like to encourage you to tell your friends about this show and all the other shows here on arrow and say hey tune in and you know be entertained and you know, a lot of these shows are thought-provoking. They make you think, and they instead of you just being in that little narrow rut, you it opens your mind and shows you other things that perhaps you hadn't thought about before and perhaps you'd like to discuss with friends and family. Well, that's me for another uh, week. I, I hope that I've provoked a few thoughts in you. I like to think of myself as provocative, you know, I'm not offensive, I'm provocative. I poke the finger at what's wrong and I'm not afraid to say that I disagree with something and give my reason for disagreeing, a fair and reasonable argument. Like I say, I'm not into throwing stones. If I criticise something, I'll, I'll give you an alternative to think about and I'll say, this is where it's wrong and this is what I propose. And this is the way I like to see people engaged, not just to say that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, but actually provide a solution and say, well, that's wrong and this is why, and this is what I propose we do. This is the better way that I want to see us go. Anyone can smash something down. How many of us can build something up? That's where I want us to be this year, building things up through the community with things like community radios, community gardens, community groups, people getting together. And forget about the mindless prattle of the internet and the radio and the television and distractions that take you away from the things that are actually going to help you and heal you and make you feel better, which is each other. If we can show a bit of kindness this year, a bit of consideration towards each other, don't tailgate me on the road. Please don't do that. I don't do it to you. Don't do it to me. Please. Don't go crazy. Don't crash into each other and kill each other on the roads. There's 537 people, I think, last year died. It's not counting the people putting wheelchairs, busted limbs, disfigured for life. This has to decrease, and it only is going to happen if we think a little about each other, and that's all it takes. That is the solution to our problems, just thinking a little about others than rather than just our greedy selves all the time. That's what I want to see come of this year. This is what I want to see of, of come of COVID, this change in people's perspective and attitude a change towards each other, this terrible slaughter of our Muslim brothers and sisters in their place of worship, we need to learn the lesson that they are us, our brothers and sisters, our community, equal to us. They have been treated, mistreated by all of society for far too long. It is time for us to step up and live what we say. Don't just, you know make it some kind of petty token gesture, some lip service. I want to see us actually doing stuff for each other this year. That's, that's my goal, that's my aim, that's where I'm at. I hope you are too. That's me. I'll see you next week. Thank you, Michael, Veronica, Arrow Radio, Wire Rapper TV, all the sponsors and all you folks out there who listen to me. I hope you enjoy my show. 
Tune in next week. I'll be back. Thank you. Bye for now.